We're going to make duck. Duck. It's a duck. So we're going to make duck. And, you know, ducks are living creatures. They're birds. So when you buy duck, buy it from a sustainable, humane farmer. You want a, a duck farm where the ducks run towards the farmer when he comes out, not away from the farmer. Believe me, there are tons of videos and websites of duck selling farms where they will show you videos of the ducks, live CCTV, you know, of the ducks just wandering around. Could be fake, I don't know. But you just don't want to see ducks streaming away from any man that's walking. That's a bad sign. So the other thing about duck that's interesting, I wouldn't try to do this for more than four people. It gets a little hard to control it because it is sensitive meat, you know? So you want to, um, you want to keep this to a two to four meal. With that beautiful crispy duck, Szechuan pepper duck, we're going to make a traditional sort of fancy sauce called a gastrique, which is really just as sweet and sour sauce, essentially sweet and bitter sauce. For things like duck, it's good to use a sort of a fruit-based sauce. And in this case, we're gonna do cherries and blackberries and shallots and vinegar, and we're gonna bring it down to a wonderful sort of coating consistency, which we'll talk about more when I do it. But this is super easy. Don't be afraid to make a sauce. It's a sauce with pieces of fruit in it. It's not super refined and it's very easy. So let's go ahead and make duck sauce. To make duck sauce, you need some fruit and a small dog. Like all great things in life, it's going to start with olive oil and shallots. So you're gonna heat up your pan. Hot pan. Olive oil. And you're gonna throw in some shallots. You're just gonna saute these down. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt for no reason. And this is, uh, you know, duck a l'orange that everybody says, oh, duck a l'orange is so fancy. The French will tell you they had nothing to do with that. You know, there's some people who use um, orange soda to make duck a l'orange. Chew on that. Sour cherries are great if you wanna use, if you can find them. But I'm gonna use a combination of blackberries and cherries. So the next thing I'm gonna do, once these have sweated a little bit, is I'm gonna pour this in. And it's going to sort of deglaze the pan slightly. I'm gonna turn this down. And you wanna cook the cherries and the blackberries for just a little, these are washed. You wanna just cook that for a little bit with, before you add any more liquid. Gastrique is a snooty term, but it kind of sounds like that flavor. You think gastrique, gastrique. It's sweet and vinegary, gastrique. It's, it works phonetically, but don't use it because you'll sound like a chef snob. So I'm just sort of cooking this for a little bit until they start to release a little bit of their juice. Now this is kind of starting to soften and release its juice. So I'm gonna now put in some vinegar about half a cup of vinegar. At Thanksgiving, they opened a bottle of this, which is superb champagne, and they didn't finish it. So I'm gonna use this as white wine, but you can use any wine, any white wine. And don't um, ever cook with wine that you wouldn't drink. If you wouldn't drink it, you shouldn't cook with it. I'm gonna put a little bit of this Biacart Salmon Rosé Champagne in. Okay, so this is um, sugar. So I'm making, I'm sort of making a loose jam essentially. So I'm, once it's nice and nasty, I'm gonna put the sugar in. I estimated the amount of sugar and it should look a little bit like this before you reduce it. Okay, now I'm gonna taste it. It's really good. I'm gonna put a little more vinegar because I want it to be a little bit more sharp and a little bit of wine. Um, so then it should be quite loose and we're gonna reduce it. You want it to be on a fairly vigorous agitation because otherwise it's never gonna reduce. It's just gonna stew, okay? So you want it to be kind of boiling, but then you have to keep your eye on it because it's gonna reduce, which simply means the, the water in the solution is gonna evaporate. And you want it to be, to use a fancy chef word, at the NAPPE, N-A-P-P-E, which is when 
If you put in a spoon, it will solidly coat the back of the spoon. The time I made this dinner before when it was a complete failure, one of the failures was that I wasn't paying attention and I over-reduced the sauce and it burnt. And remember, it's gonna be thinner hot than it is at room temperature. And you can, you can always correct it. You can always add a little liquid and then you'll have a fancy, fancy sauce to go with your duck. So one of the ways that you can tell that it's reaching nap is if you notice the difference between the way the bubbles are breaking, the bubbles are breaking more slowly now. They take longer to break. See that one? It's taking a long time to break. It's coating the spoon and staying on there pretty much. I'm gonna let it go for one second longer. This is done, I've decided. But the awesome thing about a sauce that I'm making ever so slightly before is that I can continue to reduce it if I need to. Now it's quite thick and it's boiling hot. So I'm gonna see what happens when it cools a little bit. My suspicion is it will thicken quite substantially. If not, I'll reduce it again. I would take it to this consistency before you leave it, however. You know, a spoon's not gonna stand up in it, but it's essentially a sauce already. I wouldn't put this in the refrigerator because it'll turn into a rock, but you can always, you can always loosen it. So you can make this the morning of your duck dinner if you'd like and leave it on the stove. You just don't want it to get rock hard, said the actress to the bishop. Cherry sauce with blackberries, might I add, and be a cart salmon champagne, reason unknown. So this is duck. Um, I'm gonna trim it a little bit. I'm just gonna take this little kind of piece of fat off here and this little piece of sinew sort of, okay? And then what you wanna do is kind of make sure that the fat is covering the breast and not overlapping it. So you can see this is a pretty good fit, but there's a little piece right here that's too big. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off. You wanna use a very sharp knife and there's a little tiny overhang at the bottom. So I'm just gonna slice that off. Now don't be scared of cooking duck. It's, um, it's not that hard. My, my mother used to say that duck should be passed through the oven, meaning duck should be served rare. So you want the, the skin fitting the top of the duck like that. And what we're gonna do is a sort of a variation on a Gordon Ramsay recipe. And we're gonna use these amazing things called Szechuan peppercorns. What they are, if you've ever had Chinese food that numbs your tongue slightly on the side, it's not that it burns your tongue, but it, it has a, do you know what I mean? Anybody have, ever have that? It's like a numbing sensation. That's what this is. Now, it, it's um, Szechuan cooking. I went to Chengdu where they have the panda concentration camp. It, that's what it looks like. It's so depressing, I can't even tell you, but it is a panda research station. And I went to this Chinese restaurant, it's the best Chinese food I've ever had in my life and it was Szechuan, and they had a big Lazy Susan, and we all ordered this food. It was the spiciest Chinese food I've ever had. I've never eaten anything that amazing in my life. So we're gonna use a little bit of Szechuan peppercorns. You wanna see a dorky chef thing? I have a more than pestle. I'm grinding my herbs and spices. Okay, you're gonna use it maybe two times. All right, other than that, it's just to have, you know, anybody who has a really big one, unless they're making guacamole or whatever that thing is called, it's a sign that there's, in my opinion, it means they're not really a cook. But anyway, there's this. And then there's also this, which is a spice grinder, believe it or not. So it's very awesome, this thing. You hold, um, you can store spice in the top, and then you use it to grind spice in the bottom with this grindy thing. It's extremely rad. I'm gonna put just a little bit of Szechuan in there. Not too much, because it's only one little duck piece, so like maybe that much. Then I'm gonna grind it. Grind in the Szechuan pepper. And then it's like this consistency, wow. It's like ground pepper. Things about duck that are important. Duck is a water bird, okay? So it swims. Remember, it's a living animal before it was killed. In between its skin and the flesh, there's a thick layer of fat. That's why the duck floats. So you don't wanna serve duck with a big unrendered sheet of fat. You wanna render that fat down. That's the secret to crispy duck skin. So the first thing you wanna do is make it easier for it to render, which is to score the skin of the duck. Don't cut down to the meat. 
you know, it's a little bit of skill. If you hit the meat, it's not the end of the world. So the actress to the bishop. So you're gonna make a cut like that. See, it's in the fat only. Cut like that. And then I'm gonna turn it and make a diamond pattern like this. Now you'll be surprised how much fat comes out of this. And I'm gonna give you, you know, some real tips on how to cook this. And I'm, I'm gonna, I've, I have messed it up, just so you know. I mean, I've messed up duck. So I'm gonna take the Szechuan peppercorns and I'm gonna press them into the duck like this. These are quite strong. All right, so I'm gonna press them in like that. A little bit of salt, a little bit of salt. Then I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna salt the back, okay? Peppercorns, and then I'm gonna sort of mop up what I did with the sides, you know, and clean, sort of clean your prep area with your duck. And there's your duck and your little pieces of duck fat that you're gonna use, don't throw them away. And you're ready to proceed to the stove tap. We're gonna put it in a sort of low heat pan to render it down just a little bit, all right? To let it start rendering, I mean, so here we go. Now, it didn't make any noise, and that's okay. It's gonna start to render, and you're gonna be amazed at how much liquid comes out. So here's the thing. If you put it in a super hot pan, the outside layer is gonna burn or crisp before you've rendered the fat. So you wanna keep it in sort of a, just around this temperature, and you can see already how much fat has run out of it. Let it do this for like a few minutes and render, render, render. Then you can turn it up and really sear it. Now duck fat is the most incredible thing to fry potatoes in. It's a luxurious and beautiful fat. Um, it's so don't throw it away. <laughs> These are also rendering right down. And it's, now it's really releasing fat. I'm also looking at the side and I'm looking at it go down. This white line is getting smaller. All right, I'm liking the way this is looking. I don't know if you can see how much, look at that. How much fat came out, it's amazing, okay? Or to me it is. And these are getting smaller, ooh, they're disappearing. Okay, now I'm gonna sear it, which means I'm gonna turn up the heat. Here we go. Okay, here we go, it's searing up beautifully. I'm about to flip it and sear it on all the sides. This is blazing hot. This is a lovely little lodge pan. I think it's such a beautiful design. It's not Conrad, of course. You can now see copious amounts of liquid, which is fat. I'm now gonna flip it and just sear it a little bit on the other sides. It's beautifully brown and lovely. It's searing in its own fat. So really what I'm doing is just coloring it on all the sides, okay? I'm gonna put it on the side to sear the side. See what I'm doing? I'm sort of pressing it against the side. And then I might even do this to get the bottoms. All right, here we go, I'm flipping this. So we're gonna cook it on this side. We're gonna cook it um, skin side down, okay? So right before we put it in the oven, it's gonna continue to render. I'm gonna throw in some thyme, just loose thyme like this. Oh! Oh my goodness. And I'm gonna throw in a shallot, which I'm actually gonna crush with my hand a little bit. I'm just gonna throw it in like this, okay? And I'm gonna sort of dust it with that stuff, all right? So it's a Gordon thing. It's actually, it works. I don't know how it works, but it does work. So you kind of go like this with it, sort of. I think I have a, yeah, I have like a garlic clove in the, it's bit, not even really peeled. You can just kind of mush that with your finger and throw that in. All right, and now we're gonna put it in the oven. We're gonna put the pieces of duck fat on top of it. We're gonna put these on top of it and then put the thyme there. And that's all gonna just unctuously roll down into it while it cooks for about eight minutes. So I'm opening my oven and I'm taking it over here. There it goes. You know, it should be rare. Um, if it's cooked all the way through, it's okay, but it should be a little rare. So there it is, about eight minutes. 
So here's the secret. The duck should rest as long as it cooked. Now, a lot of people don't do this. You have to rest steak, chicken. Like we always say, if you've ever carved something and it shreds, it's because it's not rested. Resting it is almost as important as cooking it. So here we go. Just gonna take it out with all its little coverings. I'm gonna set it right there. What a beauty. If I tented it tightly, it would uh, continue to cook, not just rest. So I'm just gonna go like this, so it doesn't get cold. And I'm gonna rest it for about eight minutes. And that's duck. And you can serve it with your gorgeous blackberry and cherry sauce that you made, your gastrique, um, that will just perfectly complement the beautiful richness of the duck. So there you go, duck dinner. Can't go wrong. To make duck sauce, you need some fruit and a small dog.